Okay, so let's do our first example on buoyancy. This is actually just a word problem. Um, in the next example, we'll do a little bit more of a diagram problem. But in this one, uh, let me read you the problem. Um, an irregularly shaped piece of solid material weighs 8.05 pounds in air and 5.26 pounds when completely submerged in water. Determine the density of the material. Okay, so we have this... We have this material. We don't know what it is, right? And in the air, in the air, it weighs 8.05 pounds. But when you submerge it in water, and we've had this experience, we've been, we've all been in a pool. If you're in a pool, well, think about, okay, let's say you're going swimming. And you jump into the water, and you, you completely submerge yourself into the water. Well, in some sort of relative point, you seem lighter in the water than compared to when you're in the air. So maybe you're in the air, or maybe you're just, you know, walking down the street and you weigh, let's say, 150 pounds. And in the water, you may weigh a little bit less if you were to somehow get a scale and, you know, try to go to the bottom of the pool and, you know, weigh yourself. But in the water, it, it weighs, it, it seems to weigh a little bit less. So this body of mass in the water weighs 5.62 pounds and when it's completely submerged in water, okay? And the question asks, determine the density of the material. So what is rho of the material? And rho stands for density, right? Couple things to note out before we start. Um, remember, specific weight of a fluid or body of mass is equal to the density of that fluid or body of mass or fluids times gravity, okay? And the weight, I'll say the weight in the air of that body of mass, weight in the air, is equal to the specific weight of that flu, I, I'm sorry, the specific weight of the body of mass times its volume, right? And I'll say V is equal to volume, right? And, and, and we also know that uh, the density of water is equal to 1.94 slugs. Remember, slugs is the mass unit for uh, the U.S. customary units. Slugs per foot cubed, right? And we know that the specific weight of water, not H2, not hydrony, is equal to 62.4 pound per foot cubed, okay? So we, we know all this. Now, let's, let's go back to the problem. In the air, this body of mass weighs 8.05 pounds. In the water, it seems to weigh 5.6 pounds. <clears throat> now, we can say that the weight of this body of mass in the air minus the buoyant force of the buoyant force acting on the body of mass when it's completely submerged under water. So the weight in the air minus the buoyant force is equal to the weight in the water, right? Because when you submerge this piece of material into water, it seems to weigh less. Why? Because there's a buoyant force acting upward. And remember, if if you're standing on the scale, you're obviously pushing down on the scale. But if there was some buoyant force acting up on you and you stepped on the scale, you would seem a little bit lighter. So I kind of hope that makes sense. So we can say that the weight in the water, I'll say weight in the water, right? Uh, w sub water, weight in the water, is equal to the weight in the air, oops, weight in the air minus the buoyant force, right? Because this is an apparent weight. This is what it apparently seems to weigh in the water. And that's due to the buoyant force acting up when we're trying to measure um, the weight of this body of mass in the water. And we know that the force buoyant is equal to the volume times the 
are the volume of the liquid displaced, in this case it's water, times the specific weight of that fluid. So that's, that's H2O, right? Now, if we go back to, I'll say this is equation 1, we can say this is equation 2. If we go to, if we go to equation 1, we can actually figure out the buoyant force, right? The weight of the water is equal to the weight of the air minus the buoyant force, and we have all that. We have the weight in the water, which is which is, seems to weigh 5.26 pounds, is equal to the weight of the air, or weight of the body of mass in the air, which is 8.05 pounds minus the buoyant force. And if we solve for uh, the force buoyant, we get the force buoyant is equal to 2.79 pounds, right? And if we plug this back into equation 2, so force buoyant, which is 2.79 pounds, is equal to the volume of that body of mass, which is also equal to the volume of water displaced. So volume of either the water or the body of mass times the specific weight of water, which is 62.4 pound per foot cubed, right? And if we solve for the volume being displaced of the water or the volume of the body of mass because it's completely submerged, so the same amount of volume of the body of mass is going to be equal to the same amount of volume of water being displaced by that body of mass when it's completely submerged underwater. And if we solve this out, we get the volume is equal to about 0.0 Four four seven foot cubed. Okay, so this is the volume of the water being displaced, and it's also equal to the volume of the body of mass. And remember, we said that the weight of any object is equal to the specific weight of that object times the volume of that object. So it could be uh, fluid, liquid, it could be a concrete block, if we know the specific weight of a concrete block. But, um, you know, just to solve for the density of this fluid, right, because that's what it's asking, what's the density of this, oh, I'm sorry, not fluid, but what's the density of this body of mass? We need to know the specific weight we need to know the specific weight of that body of mass. We need to know the specific weight, because if we know specific weight, we can use this formula to give us density, because we know gravity. We'll know specific weight, and we can find out rho. So let's, let's try to solve for this. Let's, let's figure out what the specific weight of this body of mass is. So the weight in the air which is 8.05 pounds, so 8.05 pounds is equal to specific weight of that body of mass times the volume. And if we, if we rewrite this some more, we can say specific weight times the volume, which is 0 0.0447 foot cubed. And if we solve for the specific weight, we get the specific weight of that body of mass is 180.04 pound per foot cubed. Okay, that's good. So, now we have the specific weight of the body of mass. We can use this formula up here to find uh, the density of the material. So let's do that. Remember, specific weight of fluid, of liquid, of, of body of masses is always equal to the density of those fluids or liquids or body of masses times gravity. And we found up here that the specific weight is 180 a pound per foot cubed is equal to rho times gravity. In gravity we're using a U.S. customary unit so it's 32.2 feet uh, per second squared, right? And if we solve this for rho we do all the unit conversions and such, we get rho is equal to about 5.59 slugs per foot cube. And that's the density of this body of mass. And we used our concepts of buoyant force to solve for that. Okay.